uh, range uh, in the house. You have to have a group big enough to control the majority in the house. If we do that, we can save our country. Uh, if we don't do that, uh, we're in, we're in trouble. Then you got Mr. Wolf, but so you have to you have to set you have to have a time limit. Why? Why 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 do you need a time limit? Well, again, and I'm going to uh, relate this to my very good friend Arlene Nickerson. She knows when I was a teacher, if I made an assignment. Um, I put a date on it, and if I didn't, the students would ask, well, when is this due? <laughs> Imagine if I said, well, when you get around to it. How many papers would I get with a, when you get around to a timeline? Or imagine the IRS, and I'm not here to be, you know, to be a fan of the IRS, but imagine the IRS saying to you, instead of April 15th, well, when it feels good, do it. <laughs> Maybe that's not a bad idea when it comes to the IRS. How much money is IRS? I mean, let's face it, this is life. If you don't have a deadline, if you don't have a deadline, it's meaningless. Then you've got Mr. Waltz, okay, and this is really something because we have him described this way extensively in the Rochester Post Bulletin. Mr. Waltz says the way to deal with the deficit is for the government to spend even more. Right? I mean, you think I'm you think I'm lying to you, don't you? He, he couldn't be saying that, could he? And that's exactly what he says. The way to deal with this is for the government to spend more. So we've got the next TV ad planned, and it's going to have our granddaughter on the chart, looking at the top, and then we're going to bring on Mr. Walls, and he's going to say we have to spend even more, and my granddaughter is going to watch this chart go up. Uh, up to Mars and the other planets. As she stands sitting in absolute total disbelief. Even an 18 month old knows that doesn't work. So Mr. Walls is on fantasy land to say the way to deal with this is to spend even more. Now what's the theory behind that? Well the theory is when the economy is slow you spend more. Hey, Last year, 2011, 36 cents out of every federal dollar spent was borrowed. That is mega stimulus by definition. So you're borrowing more than a third of what you're spending, and then you argue you get out of debt by borrowing even more, even more debt to spending. Uh, the kindest thing I can say about that position <coughs> is that it's fantasy. And there's a lot more that I can say that's not as kind. So we, that is the choice we are going to put before the public in southern Minnesota. Do you want to have somebody who believes we deal with this by spending more, thinking that that is, honest to God, the answer to our debt crisis? Or do you want to have somebody who knows we have to shrink government, we have to take people off the sled, we have to get all this dead weight off the sled, we have to get back down to 18% of GDP in terms of federal government overhead so that the engines of free enterprise can take off uh, once again. Um, so in a nutshell, that's what uh, I'm up to. I'd like to just mention one more thing and then love to have your questions and comments. We need to look in terms of what to do here. We need to look at what is happening in the country and the nation of Australia. And the reason I say that is because in the last quarter, we'll soon get figures for, for the spring quarter, don't have them yet. In the quarter before that, our growth rate was less than 2%. Australia's, Australia's was over 5%. Now Australia is similar to us in a lot of ways, culturally, in terms of free enterprise, They've got a growth rate of over 5%, we're less than two. What's the difference? Australia, about 15 years ago, decided as a country to, to do three things to foster economic growth. And before I mention those three things, let me clarify. It's not that the United States has a bad policy for economic growth. That's not what it is. What it is, is the United States doesn't have a policy for economic growth. 
Okay, there is no plan, folks. There is no plan. And one of the things I intend to bring to the Congress is putting together an overall plan for economic growth. You have to have a plan. Anyway, they put together a plan, threefold plan. Number one, as much as possible, don't spend more than what you're taking in. Now, they haven't done terribly well on that, but they're a lot better than us. Their debt is 22% of their GDP in Australia. Ours is over 100. So they're not doing well, but in comparison to us, it's a heck of a lot better. Number two, take the regulatory burden off of free enterprise. And so they roll back a lot of their regulations. Here, we keep adding, and I say we, in terms of the federal government, especially Obama people, keep adding more and more regulations. Number three, crack down on fraud. Crack down on fraud. And in the United States, not only have we failed to crack down on fraud, we have allowed unbelievable Medicaid fraud to occur at the highest levels of government, including state government in, in Minnesota. And I don't know how many of you saw the Channel 5 coverage last night of uh, the new, uh, what should I say, revelations with, regarding, with regards to Medicaid fraud. But let me just say, hang on to your head, because it looks like this is going to break wide open. And I want to be very explicit. This is Minnesota's Watergate, folks. Hang on. All right? If you want to ask me more about that later, I'd be happy to comment. Let me just say this. Medicaid fraud in the highest echelons of Minnesota government is costing every taxpayer here $500 per year in money down a rabbit hole, for which we get no return. And so for me, because I'm committed to balancing the budget in five years or less, and that means we have to cut about $200 billion every year for five years to get down to a balanced budget. And when you look then at cutting $200 billion year one, and where Medicaid fraud at the highest levels is costing us about $100 billion a year, immediately numbers pop out and we know solve the Medicaid fraud, and that in and of itself is half of what we need to balance the budget for the first year. I mean, this is just unbelievable. This is banana republic type of government that we have allowed to take place in the state of Minnesota and in the United States. And that is not overstating. Uh, so very, very quickly, I'm committed to setting up a program where we set the limit on how much we can spend for 2013, 14, 15, <laughs> and it's got a balance after five years. And before we look at a single spending bill, we have to set a limit on the total spending and then we have to prioritize. And I just love it when the press asks me, Al, where do you want to cut? And it's kind of like the lover who said in the poem, how do, how, how do I love you? Let me count the ways. <laughs> there is an awful lot that we can eliminate that would make this a better country. So, uh, so that in a nutshell is where I'm coming from. I'd love to uh, have your questions um, or uh, uh, comments. Uh, so uh, what would you like me to say more about? And uh, let me just say too, sometimes people pre preface questions by saying, Al, I hate to put you on the spot, but hey, <laughs> be my guest. Yes, sir. Just, uh, I was, before I came here, I heard Jason was talking about that uh, January 1st, we have that automatic tax cuts, or uh, budget cuts, right. and all the programs now, and they say that they're gonna get together and try to save their, their, their favorite program from getting cut. Now that's gonna go across the board, everybody. It's like, how can we trust anybody that there's going to be a cut if that keeps happening? You know what? Because, you know, January 1st, it's something. Like there's not going to be that cut. But that budget cuts, you know, because we can't let the military cut their budget at all. You know what I mean? They don't want to cut that one, so now we're going to let you keep that budget going on. Well, the, the, the question is excellent, but um, I'm just going to repeat, I believe the answer is you have to set the limit for every year. And you have to cut down to that limit. Can we trust the House and the Senate and the, and the President to uh, 
allow those automatic cuts uh, to go uh, through? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, let's face it. How many of us trust that? We don't trust that. Because it's got to be across the board. It can't just be, you know, you cut your program, we'll keep ours going. It's got to be across the board. Everything has to be on the table. Every, every, Everything has to be on the table, and then you have to prioritize. And when you prioritize, then it's relatively easy to cut things like, and let me mention just a couple. The first, not a real big item, and then what is a really a big item. A couple of weeks ago in the in the free press, there was an paper. There was an article about this uh, so-called research project going on up in Itasca County, or up north of Grand Rapids. Okay, federal government project, fifty million dollars. Now that's real money used to spend a research project to study the effect of climate change on peat bogs in Minnesota. I think we could live, I think we could live pretty nicely without that. Now what's going on? Well these are the Greens that want to find some kind of you know bogus evidence that as the earth warms you get more carbon dioxide released and so we're all going to die because somebody built a coal-fired power plant. I mean, that, it's all a political agenda for $50 million. And the problem is there are thousands of counterproductive, non-productive expenditures like that. But then you get other things. So far, we've spent $35 uh, billion bailing out General Motors. What do we have to show for that? We've got the vault to show for it. <laughs> Uh, why can't they declare bankruptcy like Northwest Airlines did and reorganize and become a leaner, meaner machine that's competitive in the world marketplace? I mean, this is a no-brainer, isn't it? Yeah. Then, I mean, then, and I know this is, uh, then, the uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the reinsurance market, which is primarily financed by the big international banks, all right? has a line of credit from the Treasury to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that in 2012 is expected to drop $200 billion, 2012 alone. Who are we bailing out? We're bailing out the big international bankers. Okay? I mean, what kind of sense does that make? So we have to work on making those, uh, those organizations truly private. So it's just one thing after the other. I mean, the federal government has become this uh, can never be drained cash cow for all kinds of, uh, let me just say projects, and I'm just going to be as nice as I can. The party's over, folks. The, and our, I believe the American citizens are realizing that. The party is over. Okay? Pork barrel politics is now has to go the way of the dinosaur. The party is over. And I want you to know when in parades I'm asked, as I am on occasion on the curb, uh, Al, what are you going to do for me? My answer is, I'm going to give you a country where you're free. And interestingly, people think about that and they say, well, that makes sense. <laughs> okay, yes sir, question. I was wondering how you talk about subsidies of many kinds, oil subsidies, farm subsidies, and uh, Look at the chart. I mean, everything has to be on the table. Everything has to be on the table. Yeah, everything has to be on the table. But let me just mention, too, as far as commitments, Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, oh, let me take Medicare, not Medicaid, veterans benefits. The threat to our commitments, like Social Security, are the debt. Okay, you think Greece can make its commitments to retirement programs? Can't do it. Can't do it. As far as the genuine commitments, I'm one of these people who believes in honoring commitments. Okay? You honor commitments. But that debt is the threat to the commitments. And you got Timmy Walls out there championing what he does for veterans' benefits. Meanwhile, he's part of the destruction of the economy of the United States of America. 